Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody's doing really well. In today's lesson, we are going to be looking at Z depth, how to set it up and how to use it in Photoshop. Okay, let's get started. So here we have an image of a villa that I worked on in the past. And as you can see on the left hand side here, we have these leaves, for example, that are in the foreground and they almost blending in with the background over here. So the tonality is very similar and we're not getting the kind of depth that we'd like in this image. So we can remedy that with uh, using Z depth. So I'm just going to show you a quick example over here and then I'm going to explain how to set it up and how to do it in Photoshop. So if we just uh, switch this one on that I've prepared earlier, you can see now that it adds this kind of layer of fog in the background and get good separation between the foreground elements and the background elements. And that gives a nice depth to the image and it just makes a more appealing image. So I'm going to close these two uh, layers over here and we are going to go and set up this kind of effect inside of 3ds Max within this file. Okay, so we're just going to minimize this and here we are inside of the 3ds Max file. So how do we set up Z depth in the correct way? Well, first thing we need to do is we're going to hit F10. That's going to bring up our render panel. Then we're going to go to render elements and we are going to click add. And over here, we're just going to come down to Z depth over here. Now we're going to click OK. And the default settings are not very good. So we need to just bring this down to zero and we need to set this up in the correct way. And the way to do that is you click T, go into top view, just scroll out or zoom out. And we are going to measure the distance from our camera to the end of our scene. So that's going to be uh, done by just, I usually use just a rectangle and I draw a rectangle and I see what the size is and that gives you the distance. But you can also use, for example, a tape and then you go to the beginning of the scene where your camera is and to the end. So that's going to be around uh, there and that's going to give you a length of 92,460. So as you can see, the problem with the tape measure is that that's blurred out and you cannot copy it. So the good thing about using and measuring stuff with the rectangle is that you can use your snaps and you can copy paste. So we're going to go here and just measure that one more time and we're going to copy this uh, number over here 93,000 millimeters control c and we are going to paste it into the min z white okay and we're going to click control v to do that press enter and that's all set up now all you have to do is go and render your scene so we're just going to click on render Okay, so the file is rendered and this is the kind of result we're going to get. So we're going to get the dark foreground and the lighter background. And now what we need to do is we need to actually save this file. So what you could do is you could just go uh, control C and save this and copy paste it. And that does work, but there is a better way to do it. And I'm going to show you how to do that by going file uh, save and we are going to actually come down and we are going to choose open exr file so i've saved one already over here but just to show you how uh, that works so we're just going to go say test for this one and we're going to click save and we are going to make sure that it says full float 32 bit so this is going to act like a raw file so if you, for example if you take a photo with your dslr camera usually uh, most cameras uh, can shoot in raw and that captures the most information possible 
and that will enable us to work in Photoshop and adjust the depth of the fog within our image. So you need to click on that and then you click OK. And that is going to save the EXR file. So we can also just click Control C to show you what the difference will, will be between a, a copy paste and an open EXR. Okay, and we're just going to close that and we're going to pop back into Photoshop. So here we are inside of Photoshop and we are going to bring in those two different types of files. So we're going to click on the Z depth, click open, and we are going to use as alpha channel, click OK. And now we have this uh, image that we have over here. So if we just enable it over here and we put a curves layer on top of that and bring this a little bit to the side over here and this one bring it back a little bit you can see how we can control the amount of fog within the image it's actually quite amazing what you can actually do with this okay and over here you can push the fog backwards this is a really useful tool and it's very easy to set up and it adds a lot of depth to your image and your image will look a lot more professional okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to just click uh, Control n click enter and we're going to paste that image that we uh, rendered before and we did a copy paste on this one we're going to do the same thing so this isn't an exr file this is just a copy paste, a standard 8-bit file. So we're going to put the curves on that. We're going to see what happens with this. So we're getting the same kind of effect. Okay, and if we bring it up this way, and we bring it here. But what we are noticing here, I don't know if you can see it on your screen, but you're starting to see this banding. Okay and the same over here and the reason you're getting that is basically because you don't have enough information inside of your file and that is the problem when you're using 8-bit files you're getting this kind of banding where sometimes you see it in images inside of the sky where, wherever there's kind of a gradient you'll see this kind of banding and that's because there's not enough information within the image so if you save out an EXR file, the, this banding, it might not be totally gone, but the bands will be much more closer together. So you'll get a much more uh, pleasing effect. So we're going to close this one. This was just for demonstration purposes. So we'll close that. And if you look at this one, where this is the EXR file, these bands are a lot closer together so you're getting an image with a lot more information and basically you you have a better image okay so all i did then was i copied these two files into my photoshop file okay we have both selected and you can drag it in here okay i think this is going to work now so uh, it's going to give you this because both of them are different uh, bit depths. Just click yes. It's going to go on top of that. And now what we need to do is we need to set our layer down over here to screen. Okay. And we are going to drop the opacity down a little bit to say around 35 I think is good and come to the curves and now we can adjust the depth of the fog and it's uh, particularly visible on the left hand side over here and that's well, that's already looking pretty good for me this looks like a hot tropical jungle I would maybe just uh, add another mask on top of this click B for brush and just remove a little bit of this here because I see 
Tedit in the little bit darker. Okay. Just do that. All right. And that gives us a pretty pleasing effect. All right. If that helped you guys, please consider subscribing. And I'll see you in the next lesson. Have a good evening. Ciao. Bye.